Hello and welcome to a continuing coverage of the 2023 Governorship and State House of Assembly election holding across the country. I am Fola Shadi Ogurinde. Millions of Nigerians are awaiting the results of the Governorship and State Assembly elections held across 28 states in the country on March 18, 2023. The Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, has also began to upload results electronically on its results viewing portal, IREV. On the IRF portal, between 60% and 90% of polling units results have been uploaded for the 28 states where governorship elections were held on Saturday. Voting ended at exactly 2.30 p.m. at most polling units across over 170,000 polling units in the country on Saturday. Sorting and counting immediately commenced. In some parts of the country, violent attacks, ballot box snatching, delays and more mad the polls, while elections in a few local governments and polling units were postponed to Sunday. Well, joining us now for more analysis is Victor Epo, political affairs analyst, who joins me live from Calabar. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so what do you make of yesterday's election and how would you rate INEX conduct as well as that of uh, Nigeria security agencies? Well, actually, thank you so much for having me join you this morning. It is uh, raining heavily in Calabar. And uh, some elections in, in some LGS were reached in some polling units in LGS scattered across the 18 local government areas of the state uh, were moved to, uh, to Sunday. Uh, but it's raining, of course. Across the city is a massive state landmass, so it could be raining in Calabar and it's not raining in other LGS. Uh, let me say that INEC, there was an improvement of uh, INEC's. Uh, INEX uh, output yesterday, it was better than what we saw, uh, give and take approximately two weeks ago. Um, uh, materials got to uh, PUs on time, and then as well as uh, the staffers were better uh, in tune with the equipment they were supposed to use. And then we also noticed, I personally also noticed that um, they had uh, technicians available at the PUs, you know, at the PU. Uh, for any network glitches that technicians were very much available After, in my polling units and some polling units I stopped by yesterday I saw when there were challenges of uh, with the beavers that uh, within 10 20 minutes uh, that uh, engineers from INEC uh, were brought in to quickly you know uh, troubleshoot and resolve the issue with the beavers so I would say it was um, it was a massive improvement from what we have approximately two weeks ago. And as well for security. Security, uh, we have more security uh, the, uh, personnel deployed, but I tell you they had no work to do because the turnout was poor. It was the voter apathy was, was, was massive, massive. We, we had, let, let's say for Cross River, we have over 70% turnout two weeks ago, but I tell you, as at yesterday, we had less than, less than 50% turnout all across the state. So, and so this what, what would you so ascribe to that? What would you say is yes. the reason for the voter apathy? Because um, apart from Calabar, other states also recorded um, low turnouts uh, compared to that of the presidential uh, election. So what would you say um, is the reason for this low turnout of voters? I, I, I would say that uh, I, I would many would tell you that uh, it's because of how the election of two weeks ago went. But I tell you, I think it's more of the political rhetorics that went out immediately after the presidential and national assembly elections. Some of these rhetorics were anti, were sort of telling people you you don't have faith in INEC, you don't have faith in the, the faith in the leadership of the country, and this went a long way. Uh, to also let people know, come on, you can as well just relax because at the end of the day, your votes wouldn't count. And as well, the cash crunch was also an issue last week, uh, last two weeks. And then yesterday, we also, I also witnessed this because people have to trek. People have to trek from their from a, a reasonable distance to get to their PUs. So it was, I, I would say, money availability uh, one. And then I would also say uh, the rhetorics, political rhetorics that came out immediately after the presidential election. And then faith in INEC. 
was almost zero. Faith in INEC was almost zero. So this alone contributed to the massive voter apathy that we experienced across uh, PUs in the state, and I believe also in the country. So in terms of um, collation and transmission of um, you know, voter result, how well would you uh, rate INEC this time around in that regard? Well, I, I would say that there's a massive improvement. There's a massive improvement in that regard because as in Cross River, we have over 3,000 PUs, over 3,000 polling units scattered across the length and breadth of the state, across the 18 LGS in the state. But I tell you that as at, as at this morning, 9 a.m. this morning, over 1,500 uh, um, um, results has been posted uh, from a PUs, for, a result from PUs. Result from 1,000, over 1,500 PUs has been posted, and that uh, we have a claim we could, we could say, and this could form about 48% of the uh, of results from the total PUs uh, across the state. So some people, some, some of the parties, they know where they stand, and the other know either to celebrate or to, uh, you know, prepare to head to the tribunal. So I would say it's a thumbs up for INEC. The thing is that these guys, INEC improved this time. I saw uh, the, the wreck for Cross River, going around polling units, and then checking. That's for capital, the capital city. I don't know about what he he did across the state, but at least I saw the uh, I saw the DG of the DSS, and then as well as the rec for Cross River going around pulling unit in the state capital to check for himself to assess the challenges. And then once he comes there, he lives with uh, the PUs. He lives the PU uh, at the at the polling unit. He leaves engineers to try and troubleshoot some of the technical glitches and challenges that may occur in such uh, polling units. So I would say. Uh, I will give them. I will give them. I will give them sixty percent improvement. Is a far departure to what we experienced two weeks ago. So, just before I let you go, let's talk about um, you know electoral violence. Um, where exactly is the loophole yes. here? Because I mean. Uh, we would expect that Nigeria at this point uh, would stop, um, you know, having these reoccurring cases of electoral violence during our elections. So who exactly is to be blamed? Is it um, the mentality of uh, the political class or, you know, those who are used, the thugs? Or would you say uh, the security agencies have not really been able to crack how they could, you know, stop electoral violence during elections? Uh, for, for me, I would say that... Uh... Uh, it's the juiciness of political office, I would tell you, I would tell you, uh, because uh, election is do or die. Imagine election to the state assembly is a do or die affair because of the juiciness of the office, because of the economic values that come with the office. Uh, so I, I would put the blame on that, and I can't even put it on security. How many policemen do we have, say, in Cross River? How many policemen do we have in Nigeria? to police um, all the PUs that we have cut across the state and the nation. So I would say that uh, I'll put the blame on the politicians. You see, when your party fails to perform and you get to the polls, you must prepare yourself either to win by the door or you win by the window, meaning you can cause violence. This is what politicians do. When they know, like I had a report yesterday, that a certain party was leading was leading in a particular PU, and then the other party, knowing that they were on the losing side, brought in talks, you know, and boys to come in and destroy the process, stop the process, so uh, just to so halt the other party being from being declared as a winner at that polling unit. So those talks were sponsored by a political party. They were sponsored by a politician. So the problem is we have to reorientate our political class let them know that at the end of the day, we also have to, uh, to you know, reorient the young guys who go to the story. Because you would never see a politician's son or daughter coming to fight. You don't even see them vote. But why do they then come to us, come to our young people, our own cousins, our own relatives, our own brothers, our own sisters, to go and cause issues, cause violence during the election? They keep their children very far away. So why then you allow yourself to be used? So as you speak to the politicians, we also speak to the youth, letting them know that at the end of the day, these guys will use you and dump you. 
ask them to bring their children to also join it to go, you know, cause violence in PUs, but they will not. So any politician who fails to bring his or her child on family relations to go and cause violence, then such politician, I will not listen to you. Youths should not listen to such politician. Well, indeed, uh, Victor Epo, political affairs analyst, thank you very much for your time and your contribution. The Labour Party has asked the Independent National Electric Commission, INEC, to cancel the governorship and state houses of assembly election results in areas where voter intimidation took place across the country on Saturday. Julius Abere, LP National Chairperson, in a statement released to newsmen, also demanded INEC to conduct fresh polls in areas where incidences of ballot snatching, intimidation of voters and high level of vote buying happened, particularly in Rivers, Lagos, Inugu, Edo, Delta and several other states. He also condemned the entire process and called for the cancellation of results and charged President Muhammad Bari to rein in the Inspector General of Police to fish out all the officers that has compromised the voting exercise. The Commissioner of Police for Lagos State, Idowu Owohunwa, has refuted claims of widespread violence and voter suppression during the March 18 governorship and houses of assembly elections. Speaking in a televised interview on Saturday, Owohunwa affirmed that attacks on the electorate and electoral officers were recorded at some polling units in Lagos, but disputed the attacks were widespread to affect the general dynamics of the process. He added that the police had anticipated the attacks and responded swiftly. Meanwhile, the Commissioner of Police in Lagos, Idowu Owonghua, says weapons and sensitive election materials were recovered following the attacks on the polling units in the Governorship and State House of Assembly elections held across the country on Saturday. Uh, speaking with journalists, Owonghua says during the monitoring activities for the elections in the state that some persons were arrested over various electoral offences. He explained that some INEX sensitive materials that were recovered were ballot boxes, offensive weapons, but the number of arrests is still being compiled, and by Sunday morning, the exact number will be made public. Accreditation and voting in Ikeja, Lagos State, began early at some polling stations on Saturday. While the process was peaceful at some polling units, violence erupted at others. According to witnesses who spoke to TV360 Nigeria, the incident which happened at about 11.30 a.m. disrupted the exercise as voters scampered for safety. There's more details in this report. Unlike the February 25 presidential elections, where there was a huge turnout of voters, polling units in Ikeja had few voters on ground to cast their ballots for the governorship and houses of assembly elections. Residents who cast their ballot attributed the low number of voters to the citizens' lack of trust in the system. We are hoping that things will go fine as we expected it to be. But nevertheless, I came here, the beavers did not, they did not give me any problem. I casted my foot and we are hoping for better results. At both polling units at the State Primary School Dairy Farm Complex, voters commended the peaceful conduct of the exercise. The presidential, we have more, you know, more electorate, you know, unlike the governorship election. We are, we are few here, you know, but of course the turnout is not too bad though, but um, I think it's still okay. It's been peaceful. Even when we had the presidential election, it was quite peaceful. The only thing I noticed today is um, I think a lot of people didn't exactly come out or maybe people had come out earlier before I came. I wouldn't know that, but so far so good. It's been okay. The beavers has been working perfectly, no hitches, no hassles, nothing. The story was, however, different at a polling unit in Allen Avenue, where there was a case of voter intimidation. A few moments into the voting exercise here at Allen Ikeja, polling unit 006, to be precise, voters say they were attacked by unknown residents of the area who came in large numbers and started throwing stones at them. And then the activity had to stop voters dispersed and then came back later on when the situation had been sorted out. While we were standing on the queue, 
just a guy picked up a stone one of the talks picked up a stone and threw at one of the um electoral observers because they were trying to interview other people they threw stones at them and started beating them i was trying to make a video of it i was warned in fact i have a screenshot of a person who warned me but he's wearing nose and um, face mask so i stopped and by the time they were done doing what they were doing on this side all the fight and all the arguments those guys left and every other person left all the armed people everybody left as soon as they left they started throwing stones at us on the queue they, one of the stones landed on my leg and I went home. One woman's head was broken. This place was very peaceful. I believe that it was targeted because of you know, the candidate that won in this polling unit in the previous presidential election. So I believe that this place was targeted because of that. Because it was fairly peaceful. And me, I am bothered because this is Ikeja Island. It is not far from the state house. I mean, it is just it's less than 10 minutes drive to the government. The coastal boss brought most of them. Mm? And you know, we just started seeing some of them were nuns and you know, coming down, you know, and people were wondering where actually they are coming from. Some of the youths around here got uh, infuriated about that, and um, that was so that they are saying that talks, they were not talks. Most of the guys that chased those people away were the youths, the young residents of this area who felt. How can we, could you come from far place? Last election, they were actually harbored in various hotels. I think we need more security because the next time they will come here is when votes will be counted. And that's going to be really bad because at that time, a lot of people will be vulnerable. So we need to call up for more backup, security backup, especially when votes will be counted. The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwolu, who is vying for a second term in office, is in the contest with a number of candidates, including Badebo Road's viva of the Labour Party and Abdulaziz Olajide Adediron of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. Simisola TV 360, Lagos. Mixed reactions have trailed the voter turnouts in the governorship and House of Assembly elections in Lagos State. Some of the polling units covered by TV360 Nigeria on the island and the mainland show a huge difference in the turnout recorded during the presidential election in February 25, 2023. In Surulere, the polling units visited at scanty voters who stayed back after voting to see to the end of the exercise. A member of the ruling party in the state bears his mind on the tribal war which dominated political discourse online and offline. There's no issues around there. Everything is cool and calm. There's no problem and everybody understands that there's no problem. And the area is a residential area, not like other areas. That's why you can see all of us, that different parties here, but we stay together, but we still work but there's no issues. It's all about choice. So we understand to the level of choice. I just walked in and voted and I'm done. So I guess it's much better than the last time. That's why I actually came late because the last time for the presidential, I came very early and I wasted almost like three hours before I could vote. This one is much better. And I didn't, they didn't have to start looking for my name in that long sheet. They just... Um, the Biva just accredited me and then I went straight to you. I believe this is a, it's a more seamless one than the first one. I, you, know, you know, that is bound to happen because you see we were introduced to a new technology and the technology will have its own um, backside too. So this is why you've seen that after getting hold of it in the first election, then it is seamless election now. And people just take, you verify, you either verify with your finger or you take your photograph and it's verified and you just go vote and go. That's why you don't see too many people, you don't see too many polling units crowded like the other time. You know, the last elections, we had an Igbo man on the ballot. We had the, the Southwest on the ballot, Achiwaju was on the ballot. In the North, we have Atiku. So, vote according to your, you know, we, we, we didn't quarrel with anybody for voting, for Igbo people voting Obi or Yorubas voting um, Achiwaju or the House House Flanese voting. We accepted that. 
at the Bonnie Camp on the bridge pulling units in Victoria Island. The large number of voters comprising a large percentage of women showed that the electorates were enthusiastic about performing their civic duty. It's going on well so far, but um, there are still some traces of, uh, you know, vote buying and um, all sorts of, you know, things related to, to that going on. Even obviously, but the more the moment these guys come around, they, they tend to just keep it low and, uh, you know, pretend as if nothing is happening. I think the other one was preferable. Yes, people came out the other one, the first one that they voted. People came out from that one, but this one, people came, but not that much. That just it. All still in Lagos, the state governor, Babajide Sowolu, has condemned all acts of political violence. Speaking after he cast his vote in the governorship and state assembly elections, Sowolu said that the electoral process is not supposed to be violent. Sowolu voted at a Kole 006 polling unit, St. Stephen's Nursery and Primary School at Adeniji, Adele, Lagos Island, around 10.30 a.m. on Saturday. The governor also praised the staff of the Independence National Electoral Commission, INEC, for arriving early to the polling unit as well as a turnout of voters. So only is vying for a second term in office, having been voted into office for first term in 2019. He's in the contest with a number of candidates, including Badi Borut's viva of the Labour Party and Abdulaziz Olajide Adeniro of the People's Democratic Party, among others. It's a time for us as a people to see and to understand that this process is not meant to be a process of violence. Election that leads to a democratic process is the best form of a validation of what true democracy should be about. And so I want to reiterate again that this contest is about peace, is about progress, is about prosperity for our state and our country at large. And I want you all, gentlemen of the press, to continue to preach and to advocate for everyone to have the right to be able to express themselves freely, fairly, and transparently. I'm indeed happy driving here this morning that everywhere in the city looks calm. But there are a few disturbing videos that we've also seen where some parties, I'm here, I'm told that they were doing one or two things which it's not verifiable, so I'm not going to talk about it, right? But truly, really, it's just to say that I'm excited and I'm happy to be here. And I want to ask that all of our voters, all of our citizens should just remain vigilant. You know, if you see anything, say something, and just all let's come out, you know, and exercise our right freely, devoid of any form of acrimony or any form of protest, or any form of uh, intimidation, that is not acceptable as a government. We'll take a breather now, but election updates and TV360 Nigeria returns shortly to stay with us. Nigerians, elections are here again. Let us shun violence. Let us play the game according to the rules. Do not be a thug. Say no to violence. Let's rise and defeat violence, crime, and sabotage against the peace of our nation. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must do everything to keep it united. We must avoid any act that promotes hate and disintegration. Say no to separatist movement. 
terrorism, fake news, hate speech, religious bigotry, and any act that tends to divide us as a nation. Watch out for strange gatherings and suspicious movements. Restrict access to sensitive documents and data, the disclosure of which may damage national security. Educate your staff and family, particularly on measures to safeguard information and report security breaches. Apply relevant legal security guidelines to protect yourself and your neighbors. Due to misinformation and wrong choices, some idle persons resort to vices in their greed to get rich quick. They resort to kidnapping, killings for rituals, and other heinous crimes. Avoid wrong use of the social media. Before you broadcast that false message, think twice. Ask whether it will promote peace or violence. For safety at home, still be security conscious. Educate your household on safety tips. Report all suspicious movements and persons to the security agencies nearest to you. Be a good citizen. Be patriotic. To pass security information, please call 0813-222-2105-0915-3391309-0908-837-3514 or send a mail to dsspr at dss.gov.ng. This message is from the Department of State Services, DSS. Welcome back. You're still watching Election Update on TV 360 Nigeria. The governorship candidate of the new Niger People's Party in Ogun State, Ulufemi Ajadi, has vowed to sue the Independent National Electoral Commission for omitting the party's name on the ballot papers for the governorship election in the state. Ajadi is speaking with journalists after casting his votes at Ofada in the Obafemi Awode local government area of the state expressed concern that only the party's logo was on the ballot paper while its name was missing. The NNPP candidate explained that the party had earlier written a letter to INEC to ensure the inclusion of his party's name on the ballot paper instead of only the logo. Yet that the party is disappointed over the conduct of the governorship and House of Assembly elections in the state. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has postponed the uh, governorship and state house of assembly elections in Butara, uh, word in Boko's LGA of Plateau. Announced in the development on Saturday, Oliva Ogundu, uh, the state INEC resident electoral commissioner, REC, says that the postponement was due to logistics problem. Agundu explained that the election materials, such as ballot papers meant for the ward, were taken to another LGA in error. He apologized for the inconveniences caused by the postponement and called on members of the community to come out in their numbers to exercise their franchise on March the 19th. The governor of Bios State, Doye Diri, has condemned the destruction of ballot materials and forwards of constituency 2 in Ogbia, local government area of the state, by suspected thugs during the State House of Assembly election. According to reports, the voting materials meant for Ogbia wards 2, 3, 4 and 5 in the House of Assembly election in the state were reportedly carted away by the armed men and hoodlums in the early hours of Saturday. The materials were also said to have been burnt. Diri described the act as highly condemnable and warned those behind electoral violence in the state to disease as the full weight of the law would be brought down on the culprits. He called on the Commission of Police to arrest the perpetrators and ensure that anyone found culpable is brought to book. Uh, very early this morning I got the reports about uh, the burning down of INEC materials from the RAC Center in that local government area. And I'm going to issue a press statement on that. And I've called on the Commissioner of Police to fish out those who are responsible for that dastardly act and ensure that they are promptly arrested and prosecuted. And so we have that uh, isolated case at Ogbea local government area in constituency two only. But we are still monitoring developments across the state. I'm in touch with the INEC at the state level and I'm in touch uh, with, the, with the security agencies. And uh, we will step up our game 
uh, in terms of security across the old state. There are pockets, isolated pockets of uh, complaints here and there, and we're attending to all of those complaints, particularly complaints that have to do with security. And let me also use this opportunity to call on all of us who are in politics. You don't force people to be ruled. You appeal to people and you cut people to work with you. And so let us avoid the use of toggery. Fortunately, we have uh, beavers now. And so that is an antiquated political strategy that people are still trying to adopt in our state. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, says its operatives arrested 65 persons across the country over alleged voter inducement. Wilson Wujaran, EFCC spokesperson, announced the development on Saturday in a statement on the Commission's monitoring activities on the governorship and state houses of assembly elections across the country. It says 20 of the suspects were arrested in Kwara, while 13 suspects were arrested in Kaduna State and other states were acquired by Cross River, Gombe, Sokoto, Kebi, and Niger states. Some of the items recovered from the suspects were voter cards, monies, lists containing names and account details of voters, and telephone recharge cards. It's a wrap on our broadcast at this moment. To join us for more updates on the election 2023, I am Fola Shadi Ogurinde. Bye for now.